But this is a big event this afternoon. I'm Dave Johnson, along with Lindsay Simpson. For, for 22 years, 21 years, something like that, I've had the honor of saying, it's in the net. When a goal is scored. We're about to say all together, it's in the ground. Because this afternoon, it is the groundbreaking ceremony for Audi Field. And again, we're usually on television together, and maybe this is a little bit television. I heard they had the Oscars last night. Something happened last night. They had two winners. We got two winners here. D.C. United and the great city of Washington, D.C. Huh? Two winners. And we don't need to check with an accounting firm. And we got so many friends here today. I want to say a little Roger Crone from uh, the chairman and CEO of Lidos is there. In fact, you're going to see... These players to my left in those nifty, how's that for an old school world? Nifty, DC United jerseys with the Lightos and Blades in the cross. It's going to bring an MLS Cup to this city. So we're looking forward to it. We start on Saturday with, with television as well. Are you ready? I'm ready. These I'm guys ready. Are ready. I am so ready. They're, ready. They're ready, but are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready to say it's in <laughs> ground. <laughs> I got, I'm gonna get, do we have any cue cards anybody didn't know? So. We're in trouble, aren't we? We're, no, we're not. We want to get this thing started and, and rock and roll. We've got just an amazing group here that have made, and we can't fit everyone on the stage that have made this come together. But we've got a few that have certainly made it happen and changing this city. And first, I'd like to welcome Jason Levian. He has been with this club since 2012, and he and general partner, Eric Toe here have had this vision that we are now celebrating today. They have fought tirelessly to make this vision a reality. Jason, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay and Dave. Uh, today is really a milestone for this franchise, uh, for our fans, for the community. Uh, it's a day that, that couldn't come soon enough for us, and we are just thrilled to be here. It's really a day to look back on all the work that's put, put into this franchise and this opportunity to have a home for D.C. United, and also a milestone day to look forward, because we've got amazing things ahead. Uh, we've got a lot of excitement ahead of us, um, and we've got a wonderful ride ahead. But, but after 21 years, uh, this franchise is finally going to have its own home, uh, its own stadium, its own cathedral for soccer. <laughs> I'll tell you this, in 1996, I was a young person living here in Washington, and I caught DC United fever at just the right time. Uh, it was a very exciting time uh, for the club. I went to my first game, it was a playoff game against the Metro Stars, DC United. Remember them? But let's say, who went on to win that game, win the series, and win the cup? It was DC United, and I was hooked. Um, really exciting time. I don't know how many remember that series. But, but. And there were a lot of great days to come from there. And I'll tell you this, 16 years later, uh, Eric Tohir and I had the opportunity to invest in DC United and become stewards of this incredible franchise in this amazing soccer town. And I jumped at the opportunity. And a lot of people looked at me and said, are you really going to be able to collectively get a stadium here for DC United? We've heard about it before. We've heard about people trying to do this. Um, is it really going to happen? And I said, you know, Eric and I really mapped out a plan four and a half years ago to do this, and we knew we were going to need our machete to get there. Um, and so at my first home match, 
uh, after we invested in the club, uh, the supporters were kind enough to bring me a machete, and I, I brought it here today because I look at that all the time in our offices, and I say, that's what it's going to take. today to celebrate and we're standing on the shoulders of some incredible people who founded this club, who invested in this club, uh, who worked so hard to make this happen. I want to thank them as well because there was a lot of work that went into this long before Eric and I arrived um, that really made this a reality. So I want to thank all those folks today, thank our supporters who've been with us for two decades uh, to see this through to reality. You know, soccer is an interesting sport because it's really the world sport and in this beautiful game of soccer you can really understand how diverse and celebrated our fan base is just by listening to the number of languages spoken in the locker room spoken in the stands and it's an amazing thing that so many people from different backgrounds come together to unite around this incredible game and have passion for the sport and I would say that maybe there's no better time in our nation's capital to build a cathedral a mosque a house of worship for soccer, for all our fans, for everyone in this community to unite. And so I think it's very apropos that we're doing this here, uh, just a few blocks from the White House, a few blocks from the Capitol, all around our federal government is surrounded, and here we are, we're building a house of worship for our love for the game of soccer and for this community. So I want to thank everyone for their support, <laughs> and I want to say that when I knew I needed the machete to get here, when I said that four and a half years ago, what I didn't know was that I needed more than a dozen machetes. <laughs> and one of the people carrying that important machete for us, leading this effort for us, was our mayor, Muriel Bowser. She's been outstanding. Let's give her a hand. I will say that she has been such a tireless, tremendous advocate as a member of the council, um, along with other members of the council who helped us so, so, so effectively to get this done. Then as the mayor, she, her tremendous team that came in on the economic development side worked closely with us. They weren't always easy, and they fought very hard for the district, uh, but we all wanted to make this a reality, and we worked so closely together and built a strong relationship to get to this day. So, uh, Ms. Mayor, I just want to thank you for everything. I'm thrilled that you're here standing with us today, uh, and just excited and delighted to be a part of this with you. excited in the Bowser administration to speak on behalf of the 680,000 people of Washington, D.C., who said it was about time we had a beautiful stadium for our fantastic soccer team. Let's hear for D.C. United. After two decades of uh, being a part of the D.C. community, and making sure that people from all eight wars had a fantastic team to support. Uh, we were so thrilled to come together to make sure that we could put together a fantastic package for the people of Washington, D.C. and for our beloved team. I want to thank the commissioner for being here, Don Garber, and let me also congratulate Audi of America for choosing the best spot anywhere in the world to put your name. And I also want to acknowledge my team who made sure that we didn't leave any stone unturned or let any barrier get in our way getting to this point. Certainly putting together the finances and the land and working with the Council of the District of Columbia and the legislation and choosing partners to work with to clear the land and working with the community. Uh, we were, I was very involved with this as a member of the council uh, on my way to becoming mayor. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had the best deal for the people of Washington. So when I came anywhere in the community, I could tell them 
We're investing in a part of our city that needs the investment, that's going to create jobs, that's going to make sure it pays good wages and give the people of Washington, D.C. a better shot at participating in our prosperity. I wanted to remove any connection between other buildings in our city and focus on this one, and that's what we were able to do. And more than that, I wanted to make sure that this team was here to stay with us uh, and that they were going to continue to back in Washington, D.C., and the best fans anywhere in the world. So to all the members of the council, I want to say to Chairman Mendelson, uh, who very definitely shared my view about how we could get this deal done, to the city administrator, and to also Brian Kenner and Kate and Gata and their whole team, our Department of General Services team, and all of the people involved in my administration with permitting and parking and small business compliance. Where are you? Raise your hand because you deserve a big round and thanks from everyone assembled here. So not only is this one stadium in, um, I, in our quest to be the sports capital of this region, and I think that this is a big check uh, in that direction, uh, it is, represents the con a contribution to what will be over a billion dollars of investment. It will create jobs, 1,000 construction and permanent jobs, which will allow us to continue to be the jurisdiction here uh, that has the healthiest economy in this region. So our numbers don't lie. Our chief financial officer said it best. The District of Columbia had its best quarter in the history of the district last quarter. And we keep doing things to attract business and people. And investment in sport is a huge part of that investment. World-class cities have world-class sports teams and facilities. And I just want to say, vamos United. Ladies and gentlemen, here, the Honorable Mayor Bill Brown. And she doesn't just walk the walk, she talks the talk, and it happens. You know, every team in the city is winning right now. Every and she's the mayor. Do we think it's a coincidence? No. <laughs> well, take it. Take it. Run as far as you can with it. And now we're about to get a brand new stadium here in D.C. So D.C. United can be united in D.C. That's a key point that the mayor made. D.C. United is staying right here in our nation's capital, the world's greatest city. It has been an incredible journey. And as I look out and see so many familiar faces, I look and, and see Mark Avenir. We first met in 1993 when Major League Soccer uh, it was just a dream. We didn't know if it was going to get started. Well, it did get started. And thanks to you, boy, did it get started. Because as Jason talked about that playoff game, that passion, you were the ones, you supporters out there, that brought it. And DC United truly showed the way in supporter culture. So give yourselves a hand, huh? <laughs> you showed the way in Major League Soccer and he did something else to go to the next level. And that's when a guy named Don Garber joined Major League Soccer with a vision and a long-term vision that we're a part of the reality of that now. The last groundbreaking he was a part of, he's probably lost track of all the groundbreakings. It was, yes, it was six degrees in Minnesota. We did a little better today, but that shows you he'll do a machete, a snow shovel, it doesn't matter. He's going to break ground and get things done for Major League Soccer. Let's welcome Don Garber, Commissioner of Major League Soccer. You know, we have been saying this in our league for, for many, many years now, that this is another historic day for soccer in America, historic day for soccer uh, when it comes to what we in our league are trying to do, which is to drive the growth of a soccer nation throughout the United States and Canada. So it's a huge thrill for me to be here. And it brings me back, Dave, to the first MLS game that I attended was a DC United game in 1996. I was a young, wet behind the ears guy and I walked into the locker room and I saw Ben Olsen and I saw John Harks and I saw Marco Echeverri and I saw this great brand and introduced myself to a bunch of guys 
and then walked down to the stadium and I saw the Screaming Eagles and, and Barra Brava and I recognized that we had something very, very special in our league, this concept of a supporter uh, energy that really created this dynamic that we have now with this huge passionate fan base in our stadiums throughout the country. But what we didn't have then uh, was anything more than one soccer stadium. We had one in Columbus. Mm -hmm. Uh, this will be our 16th wow. on Sunday. Uh, we'll open up the MLS season in Orlando in our 17th soccer stadium, and we're building together the strength of our fans and our players and our ownership, the foundation, the building blocks uh, of our sport and our league. Uh, but a lot of it started here, and a couple people I do want to recognize. Our foundation, the foundation that was is managing the legacy from the 1994 World Cup, is managed by Ed Foster Simeon right here in Washington, D.C. And you, son of Ed. Ed is doing such a great job trying to bring our sport into the streets and bringing it throughout communities across our country. And our Players Union is represented by its executive director, Bob Foose, also based here in Washington, D.C. Bob, you can... Great for the fans. So I'm supposed to only have two minutes. I'm going to have to get through it quick. Jason, uh, you said to me when we first met, I'm going to get the stadium done. Uh, it's going to take me a couple of years, but I'm going to be able to figure it out. I'm going to create a great partnership with the city and with its new mayor. I'm going to work with the city council and the sports commission, and I'm a get it done kind of guy, and I promise you I'm going to get a stadium built. Well, sir, you got it done. So, Jason, congratulations to you and Eric. And to Mayor Bowser, uh, we spend a lot, in our business, we spend a lot of time with city officials. And there are very few that basically can cut through it all, that can see the vision of our sports team, can bring the community together, and can do things to create jobs, to create opportunity, to create hope, and to create development for what really is a bunch of sand and dirt right here and in a year and a half's time it's going to be a beautiful state-of-the-art world-class facility that's going to give your town international exposure beyond that which it already has and it's going to be a great cathedral to Jason's point for our sport so thank you mayor to you and all your staff and lastly uh, these projects take a lot of support they take banks that believe, so our folks at Goldman Sachs, we appreciate your belief in our league. But it also takes great sponsors. So Scott Keogh, you'll hear from next, who's the CEO of Audi of America, not just a big sponsor of MLS and has been for years, but putting their name up on this stadium and shouting it loud, their belief in our sport, their belief in your team, and their belief in our league. So Scott, we really appreciate everything that you've done to help grow the sport of soccer in America and your support for MLS. MLS season kicks off this weekend on ESPN, on Fox, and on Univision. Our newest two teams uh, will join uh, our league and, and play games in a sold-out stadium in Orlando and 30,000 season tickets in Atlanta with a 50,000-seat crowd uh, starting this weekend. So we join all of you to celebrate uh, the beginning of uh, the Major League Soccer season. Thanks very much. Honored and happy to be here. Thank you, Commissioner Garber, for your vision, your leadership over these last few years. And it has been an exciting time for DC United, for these fans. But let's talk a little bit about the future of DC United. No one has had a clearer vision for the growth of soccer and for continuing to promote soccer than Audi of America. Audi has long been synonymous with soccer around the world, and Audi has cemented that partnership with soccer here through their long-standing partnership with MLS. Of course, being their hometown team, we are, we are so very excited that they're extending that partnership to DC United, to their hometown soccer team. So without further ado, I'd like to thank Scott Keogh and welcome him to the podium, the president of Audi of America. Thank you. Now, before we get too far along, I just want to commemorate for public record. Now, uh, before signing off on this massive contract with Jason and, of course, the commissioner, 
there was a verbal agreement, and I just want to make sure the players are aware of this, that uh, Jason, I think, was going to buy every player an R8 V10 Plus. So, uh, <laughs> If you, know, um, if you know anything about Audi, uh, one, we're a very competitive company, and we're a company that, through our roots, absolutely loves soccer. You do not attend a meeting at Audi without talking about soccer. And of course, this leads to Bayern Munich, which uh, we sit on the board and own a share of that company. Of course, a few tiny little teams in Spain you may have heard of, Barcelona and one in Madrid, I think, uh, one in there. We do sponsor them. Of course, we do sponsor a smaller team, and this is our headquarters, of course, and that's in Ingolstadt, FC Ingolstadt. They did make the, uh, the Bundesliga. They have Audi Sport Park, which is, of course, a magnificent stadium in Ingolstadt. And like I said, we love soccer, but we are also very competitive. So it gives me great pleasure that when the board members now come to D.C., we also have a beautiful Audi field in this magnificent stadium. And of course, to talk a little bit, you know, when I think about Audi, you know, I think about Audi and I think about soccer, and of course, they have a few things in common. When Europeans historically uh, looked at it, of course, uh, soccer relatively unknown in America, and Audi relatively unknown in America from a European perspective. Fast forward to today, soccer here in the States is on an absolutely magnificent, magnificent run. And if you look at Audi here in the United States, since we've been in this great part of the world, seven consecutive record years, one of the world's fastest growing brands. So I think Europe is learning, America is learning an awful lot about soccer and an awful lot about Audi. And we couldn't be prouder, frankly. So with that, we said we're competitive, so I think I was promised about 14 months and planes will be flying overhead and look at that magnificent Audi field. So we can't wait to win a title and have this great stadium open. So thank you very, very much. This will be next. Scott Keogh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, but DCI's Audi field is, is about to open. I think an R8 V10 Plus should lead the team on the field. That'd be, a, that'd be a nice touch. I've been wearing the Audi part of this scarf, hoping to get one instead of the players got one. That's good. That's good. It'll be in the playoffs. As we talked about the, the machete that Jason has, it took several machetes uh, to get things done in a nice way, if you can do things in a nice way with a machete. But it takes a lot of people, and too many people on this stage, uh, uh, too many people to fit on this stage to, to make things happen. You heard from the mayor of this great city, Muriel Bowser. I want you now to hear from the council chairman, Phil Mendelson, who helped make this happen. Audi Field on the way. Let me just let me just start by saying I said to Scott that I'm not sure it's smart to be making jokes at Jason's expense when he's got that machete. <laughs> I want to acknowledge a couple of colleagues of mine who are here. Uh, Charles Allen, who I think is going to speak after me, the council member from Ward 6, uh, and uh, Robert White, who's council member at large, and Jack Evans, who's council member Ward 2. And if anybody knows anything about sports in this city, major league sports and stadiums, Jack Evans has as much to do with this stadium as any of the rest of us who are up here on the stage. So thank you, Jack. And in fact, I remember a conversation, Jack, that you and I had in my office. I think it was in October 2014. I'm not going to go into all the details, but you walked out of my office saying, we're never going to get a stadium. We're never going to get a stadium. And so here we are. And, uh, <laughs> But Jack was pretty helpful, and there were some other discussions that I remember, and uh, Jack was very helpful. I just want to make a, a few points. First of all, as I think everybody else has said, this project has been a long time coming. It's been a long time. It was pending in the council in 2014, but uh, as others have said, it dates back 20 years. Uh, and it's good for soccer, and it's good for DC United, uh, and I think it's going to be great for the city. This is a transformative project. I mean, as I'm sitting there, I can look out over there and I can see the National Stadium. We have really transformed this neighborhood a lot, but not just this neighborhood. Uh, I think it's a significant in the transformation and the economic development of Washington, D.C. And we're partners in this because while we're helping D.C. United, they're also, in turn, with their success, helping the city. Uh, the third 
thing I want to say is that um, I want to thank DC United for working with all of the partners. And when I say partners, I'm including the community as well. There were a lot of issues. There are always a lot of issues when you come in and you change the neighborhood the way we're doing here. And DC United was willing to, it had the patience and it was willing to work with folks. And that's so important. And especially working with the neighbors and making commitments to be a, a good member of the community, of the Southwest uh, community. Uh, the last point I want to make is the district is the core of this region. We're proud to be the core of this region. This region is changing a lot. It was U.S. News and World Report that just a couple of weeks ago said that the Washington metropolitan region is the fourth best region to live in. And uh, uh, so we're proud of that. And uh, part of the being the core is also being the host to major league sports, whether it's the Nationals or now DC United. So um, this is, as I said, a plus plus for everybody. Thank you all for being here, but especially thank you, DC United. is a very familiar face in these parts. He's the council member of Ward 6, the ward where we are building this brand new stadium right now. So I'd like to introduce Charles Allen. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll say um, Loudoun County United just doesn't have the same ring, does it? It's DC United. So we're very excited, very excited. Um, I'm thrilled to, to be able to be here with you and uh, to be on this spot again, Jason. Uh, we had a whole lot of fun. I still have the sledgehammer from we knocked a few buildings down. Um, getting to the groundbreaking is exciting. Um, I'm going to join uh, my, my chairman in acknowledging Jack Evans. This used to be Ward 2, um, but Jack has been involved. He'll, he'll never let me forget that, too. Um, Jack's been involved with this project, I think, since Lon Font was laying out the city. Um, but we do owe Jack a big round of applause. Let's do that again. I'll be very brief though and just talk a little about what does this stadium mean to, to Ward 6 and in particular to Southwest. Um, this is a great neighborhood, but Buzzard Point, this area is so full of potential and today marks a huge catalyst in what we're going to see happen in this, in this part of uh, the district and this part of Southwest. We also wouldn't be here without great neighbors. Uh, I saw earlier my friend Marty Wells, who's been very helpful, uh, working with DC United with Amadon Bowen, L our local elementary school, which DC United has formed a great partnership with. I know that we've got advisory neighborhood commissioners who've been very involved in working to make sure that this stadium is going to be successful, that the growth of this area is going to be successful, and they're going to be engaged, I promise you, at every step of the way. Um, but this is going to be something that brings jobs to our community, it's going to bring amenities to our community, it's going to help Buzzard Point grow up and help reconnect the rest of our city, frankly, with that river that's just at the other end. This stadium holds a lot of potential for Buzzard Point, and I'm really, really excited by that. Um, the last thing I'll say, Scott. I heard a lot of the players clapping when you talked about those outies, but I heard talent clap really loud. I think he was hoping that he's on that list. But thank you all so much. Excited for today, and I uh, can't wait for us to cut a ribbon and get out on the pitch. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charles. You know, this time I thought well, Vaughn was a French midfielder, but I, I missed the... Uh, when... Appreciate the laugh on that, but thank you. So, <laughs> Little, little city uh, history humor there, and I was, I was hoping that would. But I, I'm working on whether we do it's in the net or it's in the ground, okay? I'm working on that. Or it's in the ground or it's in the dirt. That's the two I'm working on. But as we just talked, and Mayor, you got things going on in your city. I mean, I got so excited just talking about how you're connecting this whole area. Uh, we're talking economic development. Uh, this, uh, we're not just kidding around when we say the greatest city in the world, the nation's capital. And, and to help make things happen, the deputy mayor of the nation's capital, Brian Kenner, deputy mayor for planning and economic development. It's a great title, it's an important title, and we're a part of that title. Come on up, Brian. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I am Brian Kenner. I'm the deputy mayor for planning and economic development. Rarely, uh, I think in our office, do I personally have an opportunity to work on something that also means a lot to me. Uh, I was telling Don Garber that I moved to Washington, D.C. in 1995 and was a part of those first wave of D.C. United fans that used to trek over to RFK Stadium and see the team and really see that wonderful collection of people, including Ben Olsen, uh, really take soccer to the next level, not only in Washington, D.C., but nationally. Uh, and so having the opportunity to also now professionally 
work on the DC United project has really been a dream come true for me. My boss, the mayor, says that I got three jobs that I need to be concerned about. I need to be concerned about affordable housing, I need to be concerned about tax revenue, and I need to be concerned about jobs. This project represents all three of those opportunities in Washington, D.C. This project, from a stadium perspective, is going to be a catalyst for thousands of units of affordable housing that will come to Washington, D.C. The ancillary development that's going to come in the Buzzard Point area is also going to be is also going to be able to create hundreds of millions of dollars of tax revenue for the District of Columbia, Columbia to support schools, police, and all those other needed services that we have in the District of Columbia. And finally, jobs. This opportunity here not only will provide construction jobs in terms of building the stadium, permanent jobs in terms of the operation, but there's all kinds of additional commitments that have been made around making sure that 51% of all the workers will come from the District of Columbia, that we also have an opportunity for certified business entities to, to take part in this project, which are uh, partners that are local, located here in the District of Columbia, as well as an opportunity on the construction side for 35% uh, to go to small and disadvantaged businesses as well. So this provides not only a great opportunity to have a great sports team here, but a great economic development engine uh, in the District of Columbia. Finally, these kinds of projects do not occur without literally a village making sure that they happen. Uh, I see lots of people here. First, I just want to rec recognize the members of the Deputy Mayor's team, if they can all raise their hand. Deputy Mayor's for Planning and Economic Development, they did a fantastic job. And the people can talk about. I see our City Administrator, Rashad Young, who's awesome to make sure that this project actually was able to happen. Thank you, City Administrator. Uh, Literally one of the forces in our office to make sure that this happens, and all the people who know him will smile when I say that, Kate and Gata. If Kate, could you please stand up just for a second to be recognized? Kate is the primary traffic manager in our office. Betsy Cavendish, who was also to make sure that we, in our community benefits agreement, had our first gender equity uh, participation. So thank you very much, Betsy, in that way. Uh, I see Tom and Troy from DC United, great partners uh, to continue to work with. Uh, I see all kinds of people that represent the District of Columbia as well. So again, just thank you all. It really takes a village to be able to get this done. And as the mayor said, vamos United. And now, of course, this next guest really needs no introduction. He's the man who's been wearing a DC United badge for, since 1998, and there's no one, I can assure you, at RFK that's more excited about having a new home. He's the guy in charge of bringing the Audi MLS Cup playoffs to Audi Field next year. Head coach ben. Except the coach, apparently. <laughs> Even Talon's driving out of here with an Audi. Very cool. Um, Audi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be involved with this club uh, as a player and coach for nearly two decades. Uh, so as you can imagine, this is a very special day for me, as it is for many of you. First, I want to thank uh, Jason Levy and Eric Tar here, our ownership group, for fighting at every step of the way to get us a new home. To me, this day is also about all the players that wore the jersey throughout the years and the staff that worked tirelessly to build this club. To our fans, you out there, anybody? <laughs> to me, you deserve this stadium more than anyone. It will be one of the great joys of my life to watch you make Audi Field into one of the best atmospheres in the country. Now, I know we're all excited about next year, uh, but the season starts this week, uh, and, and we have a job to do. We got a lot of work to do this year, uh, so I hope to see you all at good old RFK. We got another year there, so make sure you show up. Good chicken tenders still. <laughs> <laughs> the they got 
We got one more year. Come out and support us and make sure you're there this weekend because the, uh, the boys deserve it. They've been working hard. Um, it, it's my pleasure at this time to introduce uh, most of, a good portion of, your 2017 DC United squad. And we will start with uh, the man, Lucho. Come on up here, Steve Birnbaum. A guy that's been around this club a long time. It means a lot to you guys. Bobby Boswell. A local boy, Terp, Taylor Kemp. Jared, you here? Jared, get on up here. Jared Jeffrey. <laughs> From our great neighbors to the north, Canada, Max Tissot, come on up. <laughs> New young goalkeeper, uh, extremely tall, Eric Klinovsky. Nick, you hiding over here? Yeah. Get on up here. Nick's a little shy. Yeah. Nick Delione. Yeah. A new forward from Costa Rica, Jose Ortiz. Yeah. Some will recognize this young man's last name, but he's paving his own path, Ian Harks. <laughs> Travis, you want me to say anything about you? <laughs> if you want, Travis Vora. <laughs> Another Terp who came to us last year, we're full of Terps right now, uh, Patrick Mullins. From Brazil, Marcelo Sarvis. From England, Rob Vincent. By way of Germany, Julian Boucher. And last but not least, uh, a guy that's been around this area uh, since he was born. And uh, it means a lot to this club, means a lot to the fans, uh, and so much that he's asked to say a couple words. Mr. Hey. Bill Hamid, everyone. <laughs> such a monumental day for DC United and Washington DC sports. Growing up a lifelong DC United fan myself, uh, it's very heartwarming to see so many good people work around the clock, tirelessly on and off the field to make this dream a reality for so many people. Uh, DC United and RFK Stadium has meant a lot to me. Attending my first game at RFK, a USA against Mexico match in 95, my local soccer friends and I made it a habit to come to as many United games as possible. Although, we never really watched the game. <laughs> and our parents never really watched us. <laughs> they hung out and had a good time supporting the team while Marco Echeverri and Jaime Moreno scored amazing goals. <laughs> and 
Lee Pope and Jeff A. Goose locked down opposing offense. And our head coach, Ben Olsen, fight for every ball like every game was a championship. So for a good 30 minute period, we would sneak off, we'd take a ball, and we would run, dribble, and pass throughout the concession area at RFK Stadium. <laughs> We always had a great time and enjoyed the experience, and I cannot wait to experience the Screaming Eagles, La, Bra La Barra Brava, the District Ultras, and all these United soccer fans. Bring the drums, bring the goal scoring, beer throwing, <laughs> and bring the best atmosphere in MLS to our new home, Audi Field. say is I hope Audi Field can give generations of young boys and girls the experience and motivation RFK gave me to go after my dreams. Thank you, RFK. It only seems fitting that we as an organization give our all on and off the field for this final season. And like Coach said, it begins this Saturday, March 4th, Get there early, RFK Stadium, and they cannot hold us back. <laughs> Bill Hamid, ladies and gentlemen. Now just waiting for crying out, no, that's, uh, that's coming up. Hey, it's almost in the dirt. You ready? Huh? You've been waiting for this. Some were waiting for 21 years. We're getting closer and closer. And when Bill Amin says, you can't hold us back, you can't hold us back. We're ready to get this started. We're about to begin a history-making moment here in Washington, D.C. with the start of the construction of Audi Field with the groundbreaking and Lindsay, we have special instructions. We want to get this right. Very special instructions. Now everybody needs their hat. They need a shovel, which are being handed out. Excuse me, I'll get out of the way. All right, now if I can ask you guys to step towards the big pile of dirt with your shovels. We're going to get a few photos here. All of our photographers, please make your way to the front. All right, now this first photo. I need everybody to stand with your shovel on stage. Specific <laughs> instructions here. It's kind of right. like Simon says, only Lindsay says. <laughs> All right, we got that one? Okay, now, I need everyone to stand with their shovel in the dirt. Don't shovel the dirt, just stick, there we go. It's in the dirt! In the dirt. It's in the dirt. All right. Dave, this is your time. It, it's in the dirt, almost, but no, I don't want to Okay, I'm sorry. All right, next. Everyone, hold their shovel raised with dirt in it. It is in the dirt! Yeah! Guys, it actually happened. All of you who said it wasn't going to happen, it's happening. It really happened. We're underway. Audi Field, 2018, RFK Saturday night. A nice round of applause for everybody on stage. I know, I know, not done yet, not done yet. I got a couple more. Okay. <laughs> Players and Ben, up to the. Well, Ben's already up there. Players, can we have you join them up here so we can get a photo with you guys? We can do a few in the front, a few in the side. Some of you on this side over here. A few of you can pop in. Eric, you're tall. You can hit, you can get in behind these guys up here. Here we go. All right, we'll go with shovels in the dirt. And then 
Shovels lifted with dirt in them. There we go. <laughs> all right. That's it. That's all I've got for you guys. shovel of dirt with the purchase of an Audi R8 V10 Plus. So, now it's, it's special dirt here. So, thank you everyone here. This is, this is your day. If you're here, it's because you care about the city and care about this club. Feel good. This is a special day, February 27th, 2017, in the history of D.C. United and the history of Washington, D.C. There you have it, the groundbreaking ceremony. We're going to have you guys make your way to the cars for and the backdrop. We'll have Audi Field, which is set to open there. next year for the next season. So thanks for watching.